Hi there MotoGP fans, welcome back to the channel, you are here with The Architect and we are playing MotoGP 21 on the Xbox One X. The GP season is over in real life, but the virtual reality life still continues guys. We are here at the second round of our GP career in Moto3. We'll just have a quick look at the calendar. Because I think uh, this is going to be a single round, I think, and then we're going to potentially follow the calendar as it is here. So uh, when we get down to here, we'll, uh, we'll do a double weekend, maybe, and, and then a single, and then a double, and then a double, and then a single, etc., etc. So I think that's my plan to work through the season in uh, Moto3. So we are at the LaSalle circuit again this time round. Let's just have a look at our standings quickly. So in the last round, in our first round, our debut round with the Husqvarna, we finished sixth. So it wasn't too bad. We met our objective. Messia on the KTM, he come first though. So uh, we, we are chasing the two KTMs at the moment because uh, Acosta also came second. So got a bit of work to do. It looks like we've completed some of our frame and engine advancements so let's go and have a quick look at that before we carry on going forward so we've got a component installed already uh, we don't have enough development points so far to meet the requirements to start to move into the second module so not a lot we can do about that so maybe when we go into testing next time round we will have sufficient requirements to be able to continue that but we have got sufficient requirements on the frame so we can start and develop and install this which is what we'll do so what does this one do reinforcement structure for the rear swing arm so makes the bike stiffer and more stable okay well we're going to do it we're definitely going to do it and we're going to add staff but we're going to use the automatically assigned staff so that's what we shall do. The only thing we need to be conscious about is that it doesn't assign everybody, which I think is what, it, uh, has it done that? I think it has, yes. Because what we need to remember, guys, yes, we do want to de develop the selector node, but what we need to remember, guys, is that when we go into testing, if we don't have enough R&D in this area, then we're going to struggle. So I'm going to move all my R&D development guys back into, into this arena, I think. I think that's what we should do. So let's find our R&D guys for the engine. And we'll add these back because we, we do need to pick up those R&D points when we go into testing. So Erica is going to go back into R&D. Who else have we got? So what I'm looking at here guys is the number, uh, so if you look at Erica here, so under the engine development, she scores 50, so uh, she's a good R&D person or engine person, whereas in the frame she only scores 25. But for Thomas for example, in the frame area he scores 50 and in the engine area he scores 25. So we can leave him in that space. So the areas that we're looking for are those who are highest in the engine department like uh, Jose so we'll also select him as well to go into the engine department weekly production 140 so we're good to go just before we head off in into testing we've got some candidates for personal manager so let's see what it's given us search for contracts with factory teams seems a little bit early to start doing this but let's see what we've got in Moto2 so here we can show our interest in a team that we may want to or may not want to race with mm, proposal chance low obviously got lots of confidence in us but it's early in the season Now that Moto2 bike I rode in our last career mode in Moto GP20 and it was epic. It was an absolute ball. 
It's. Uh, I think we'll leave this for now. We we won't start any negotiations. Because what I would like really is a Valentino Rossi 46 team VR46. That's what I would like if we can get one in honour of Valentino Rossi. So we're not quite there yet in in the contract arena. So nothing more to do there. So uh, technical staff management. Let's have a quick look here. So we're looking for some improvements in the engine and frame area. Let's have a look what we've got. Fernando, so he's aerodynamics and electronics. So we don't really have anything better at the moment than what we've got. So nothing more to do there. So on that bombshell guys, I'm going to go and head off into La Salle circuit and do the testing and I shall see you on the circuit for the start of the race. I'll see you in a second. Right, so we've landed in qualifying guys and we've landed in the second session which is all good news but it's very very close, very close at the front. There's not a lot in it at all so it's going to be a close race again. Let's put softs on and let's see if we can do a qualifying lap. In the pit, the mechanics are preparing the bike and the rider seems very focused. Now let's see if he can improve this time. Got a new helmet guys. So this is, well we'll talk about the helmet soon. Let's see if we can put in a qualifier first thing. That wasn't a bad line, a little bit wide. And Mino just in front of us, he'll be set in the first lap. The first and second sector, we've got fastest laps so far. And there are a couple, four out on the track. But we're going to have to go around again anyway, just in case. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that balls it up. Not got the fastest lap now. We're gonna to have to go around again. We need a good exit out of here. Bit of wheel spin there as we come out, but we're gonna to have to go around again so we can improve on this lap, whatever this lap is going to be. We'll see in a second. 209 just. So we're third at the moment. Lots of wheel spin on the soft tyres. We're not really improving on this lap. So we might have to go in and see where we stand. I don't think this is going to be enough. It's not going to be enough at all. We're nearly a second off the pace already. Oh, this is a terrible lap. We're going to go in, guys, and we're going to come back out. Let's just have a quick look where that leaves us at the moment. Fourth at the moment. I might put mediums on. I think that front tyre is getting too hot. It's just affecting us. I think I'll go out on mediums if we've still got a medium. Because we're going out on a medium front in the race anyway. Let's just have a quick check, see if we've got a medium that we can use. We have. And let's put a medium on the back as well. We're going to go hard in the race. So we still need to improve. Now we're sixth. Seventh. Okay, so we're still on the third row, but we need to improve. So let's go out again. Okay, that wasn't a bad drive out of that corner, but now we're 10th, so we definitely have to improve on that lap. So we're up in our first sector. In fact, we've got the fastest time in the first sector so far. It's slow around there. 
That's affected our second sector. But that was much better, so we should be up there still. We've got the fastest time in the second sector. Over a second up now, third sector, fastest lap and the fastest time of the race. Gotta get a good exit here. One and a half seconds up so far. This should put us on pole position, I think. Point four up. Ooh, hello. Yep, point four up. Let's return to pits on that. So, met a qualification goal. A 208.2. Although, although that was in power mode 3, and we know we can't be doing that in the race. So, what does the grid look like? It looks like we're in pole position. Sergio Garcia in second place, with Philippe Salach in third place. So, that's the front row. Antonella Fanart in Alcoba on the second row, with Acosta Masir and Foggia on the third row. Now, Masir and Acosta are first and second in the championship at the moment so that's not great qualifying for them guys from the peninsula of qatar the floodlights that light up the lasalle circuit are on and any moment now the moto 3 bikes will be revving their engines once again as is customary at this track we're looking forward to great weather for the grand prix with temperatures that shouldn't cause any tire problems so yep got the new helmet guys that's the new helmet this is uh, one that I built and prepared in the creator. I love it. I think it's great. It is available for download as well if you wanted to go and download it. But let's crack on with this. Consumption. So we're going to put a new medium front on. So recommended tyre choice. We've got one hard left. Full tank fuel. And let's go. And see what we can do. So most people are medium fronts. So there was a soft there, but I didn't see who it was. Pedro Costas a medium hard. Darren Bind is medium hard. Didn't see what McPhee was on. Our teammate is medium hard. So it seems to be the tire of choice. The Qatar Motorcycle Grand Prix will start shortly here in Doha with the riders ready to compete on this amazing floodlit racetrack. Come on, get a good start. Let's not fluff it on the start. A little wheelie there, but look at Philippe Salah. She's off straight away. So we got off in the lead. And there's our fellow Uskvarna teammate. Now he's up, Fernandez. It is Fernandez. We try to hook it up the inside there of Salach. These guys are bolting, aren't they, straight away? They're going for it straight away. Antonelli's just behind us. We need to keep an eye on Antonelli there. They're not escaping us. That was really fast by us. Nearly into the back of Philippe Salach. Up the side of Fernati as well. Our teammate has got us back. So has Philippe Salach. Oh! oh! My God, he nearly took us out. Philippe Salach has binned it. 
nearly took us with him and then we nearly got rammed by Antonelli and now Messia is in third place and because of that we've gone so deep on that corner let's get a slipstream off Messia if we can before we reduce our power mode down to number two come on power mode two now Good first lap that was. Whoa, terribly wide. We nearly lost it completely. That's put us a few places back as we collide with Pedro Acosta. Sergio Garcia now has, has also took third spot. Power mode 2 really makes a difference in this bike. It makes it so slow. So, we're now in fifth place. Which makes me think, is our pace just as it was before? I don't, want to, I don't want to settle for a 6 if I can help it. But I need to get his bike under control because I'm losing time all over the place. We're not getting the apexes. That's better. Hopefully we can get a slipstream off this last corner. Up to power mode 3. As soon as we can, try and hook, him, hook in behind Pedro Acosta. We're going to get it. But we're at our top speed now. In fact, I think I got the best line there out of all of us. So right on the back of Messiah now. That was fast through there. got to be our teammate to get our research points. third lap, two laps to go, we're second up on this lap we can get some slipstream off this last corner behind Fenati. Power mode 3. We got a better exit than Fenati there anyway, so we're looking in behind Messia. And then in behind Sergio, and look at that! as we take the lead using the slipstream
just got to hit every apex now it really makes a difference hitting your apexes Well, look, I'm on the limit here, riding the wheels off this bike. I can't go any faster. Where are we? Oh, the sea is right behind us. We just need to be cool, like Bagnaya is. They're going to have the slipstream down this last corner, or around this last corner. We've also got to be careful of the front tyre as well, there's not much left on it, we've got one lap to go. You see it right there. Hardly anything in it. Oh, terrible exit. Terrible exit. Power mode three. Hopefully they won't catch us. Not enough slipstream. Fanati's in third. Messia is still in second place. We've got the fastest lap still though. Can we win our first race? It's going to be so tight though. I think we can do it. They're dropping off, you know, and I've got no front tyre left. They're dropping off. They're dropping like stones. No, they're right back on me now. 0.3 of a second. But it's Garcia in second place. Point four of a second now, Garcia behind us, point five. Just stretching out the lead just a tad. Losing traction on the front. Track limits warning. Ah! Oh. oh Garcia! Runs into the back of us on the very last lap. We're back down in fifth. Can we get a slipstream? I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe that. The stars of this thrilling race are finishing their cool down lap, so let's take advantage of this moment to take a look at the Moto3 final results. I thought we'd got that. I thought we'd got that win then. And then Garcia just went into the back of us, centres wide, because our front tyre has completely shot it. Jamal Masia, first place then with a 208.8 .8 for his uh, best lap. Romano Fanati, so we didn't even get our points in the end, our research points, because Fanati is the best of Scavana, so he comes second place, Acosta in third, Sergio Garcia fourth, and we come fifth, and Antonelli in sixth place. Incredible. So, Riders Championship, so Messia is leading now with 50 points. Pedro Costa is still in second place, but Romano Fanati is the one who's really shot up seven places into third position now. We still are consistently in sixth. 
Uh, so nothing changed there for us. But we're going to have to be careful now. Sergio Garcia, he stayed where he was as well in fifth. But Antonelli's moved down one place, giving that place up, I think, to probably Fanati. So we've got some work to do, chaps. We've got some work to do. Who else is down here? Where's our other teammate? Fernandez. He's moved up one place, but he's right at the back. He's not doing great. Okay. Well, the team championship, so we've moved up one spot, two spots in team championships with Fanati's superb second place. Uh, that's uh, got some additional points there, but KTM, IO KTM team are still leading there. Yeah, I'm pleased with the helmet. That looks quite good. So reputation, managed to get all our qualifying objectives done and our race objectives. So total weekend reputation has gone up. So contract status is secure. Race credits. Got a few credits there as well. Research data, I think we missed out now on two of the things we did lap by lap and the leading rider so um yes what can we say so back in the office looks like we've got our engine upgraded so we'll need that for next race let's just have a look in the calendar so week 12 payments of salaries so they're going out so while we're doing a single race, we'll just have a little quick look in personal manager, see if there's any changes here. I don't think there will be. No, no change yet. Establishment of teams, no change there then. So we can have a look at our engine build now. We've got the research points that we need. So we should be able to start developing this engine. So we shall do that. So what is this module? Reduced airflow turbulence using the airbox. So this guarantees cleaner air for the engine, improved combustion, which will in increase our torque. We're going to go for that. We're going to develop and install that. We can add our staff onto it, automatically assign staff. So it's doing it again. So when we automatically assign staff, it just assigns everybody, which of course we don't want to do. Why does it do that? Why can't it just go, okay, you're developing an engine and you're developing a frame. I'll put the engine people in the engine and I'll put the frame people in the frame. So now I've got to go over here and I've got to put back some staff on the frame. So let's find our frame people and put them back where they belong. Come on, Milestone, you need to fix that. Confirm that. So three weeks for the frame. And the engine, five weeks for the engine. So how many weeks have we got for Portomeo and Areth? So our engine frame development is going to be for Areth. Okay. So let's advance a week then. And we can advance another week. Which brings us to Portomeo, guys, in Portugal. So this is where we're going to leave it today. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I shall see you in the next episode at Porto Mayo and then Hareth. So it's do it will be a double episode the next time around, guys. So thanks for watching. Like this video if you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I shall see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.